Hello, Richard. So, um, can you just tell me a little bit about you to start with? Yeah, so uh, I'm a GP and I've been doing mental health related work as a part of that for, for quite a while. Um, and then I'm also a researcher and, you know, initially was doing mainly mental health in primary care research and then got involved in a, a study um, which was about suicide prevention where we were interviewing individuals in the criminal justice system. Okay. So that's how I sort of got involved in this area. Okay. And can you tell, tell us something about the, the background to the Engage project? So, yes, yeah, so that, that came from that original piece of research where we were um, discovering really that, that people had very little mental health input and very little input for their mental health problems. Yeah. Um, and we did a larger study, COCO study, which um, quantified that and showed that you know, compared to substance misuse care, specialist care, which was really quite considerable for, yeah. for, for prison leaders with anxiety and depression, yeah. uh, we showed that their mental health input was virtually zero. Right. And so, who was the engager intervention for then? Um, for that huge middle group of people who don't have a psychosis or a severe personality disorder yep. where they might be getting some specialist care um, and also that small that smallish group of 20 30 percent of prison leavers who don't have a, a mental health problem so so anyone who, who within that middle group has common mental health problems anxiety depression um, or thinks that they're likely to on release because for some people um, being in prison is, is anxiolytic mm. Yeah. Okay. But but we don't exclude anyone on the basis of you know a personality trait, self harming, substance use, in the way that many mental health, mental health teams for anxiety and depression would in the community. Okay, so for that middle group um, that actually don't get much in the way of intervention at the moment, so what what was the trial? What what did you actually do? So uh, the trial involved. Um, so the trial involved identifying people to start with, to join the trial, so we had to screen them in the, in the prison, um, work out who the right, who wanted to join, so they had to be willing to go along with research procedures, they had to be willing to get help, but actually more than half of those who were potentially eligible did, which is a very good sample for a, for a mental health trial. Um, what we were offering, the intervention, the engager intervention, that was developed with um, a, whole, a whole process over two years with peer researcher involvement, um, focus groups, testing out the study. Um, that included an intervention that was designed to support a whole range of outcomes. So not just mental health outcomes, but supporting people into um, uh, secure accommodation, to reduce offending, to reduce substance use, whatever the individual wanted. So actually at the heart of the intervention was this idea of a shared understanding mm -hmm. and that was the practitioner working with the individual uh, to think about them and their life at that moment. So what would make a difference to them? Okay. What they wanted to change, whether it was an emotional thing, a substance use thing, uh, or just getting secure accommodation, and then what could be put in place to make a difference to them. Yeah. And, and so we were manualising flexibility, saying actually the, if the practitioner is doing their job well, they are creating a plan flexibly from the resources available. Okay. And were there other aspects to the intervention as well as that sort of personalised plan? Yeah, so around that, um, the individual practitioner had a co-practitioner and a team leader who was also a supervisor. So this was an experienced mental health practitioner who, as well as being the team leader, would often meet the individual, really get to know them and support the engager practitioner. We also had to provide training with a manual and ongoing supervision for the whole team. Yeah. But the other key aspect was uh, working with other services yeah. and thinking about endings. So although we had to keep the team really robust, we also knew that they were part of a wider system. Yeah. So it was always about liaison with, with probation services, housing or um, substance misuse services, trying to make sure that there was one plan team around the patient okay. and if at all possible there was something there at the end as well. So this was a transitional intervention so it followed them 
from the prison through the gate into the community yeah. and as you say trying to link them up with existing services based on what they need yeah. so a bridging yeah. through the gate intervention yeah. uh, where the initial contact in prison was very much about building trust getting to know the individual and then the day of release was absolutely critical yeah. so they would turn up uh, the, the practitioner would come meet them at the gate, they jump in a car together, yeah. so it's all risk assessed, but yeah. they would then drive them to wherever they needed to go or wherever they needed to avoid. Yeah. So back to the family, to probation, to, to, to accommodation services, yeah. uh, avoiding the drug dealer in the pub. Yeah, no, it sounds, sounds very good. And obviously the, the, the study is still ongoing, um, but I understand that you've got some early emerging findings, do you, do you want to share Yeah, those? so we've got two parts to the evaluation yeah. uh, broadly, so we've got a qualitative study that uh, followed a detail of the process of care and a quantitative study. So the qualitative study has shown that broadly there are, there are several groups of, of, of individuals. Now some people resisted the intervention and disengaged quite early, either because they felt hopeless or because they were naively optimistic. Yeah. Um, some of them engaged well, made some changes, but then got blown off course by events, other things happening, ended up with bad habits again. And the third group was shown to engage well, um, be offered the right things, make responses, and then real show, show substantive lasting changes yeah. in their outcomes. Well, that's really interesting. Yeah. So, Given that, that, um, that profile, we were quite unsure about what the, the results of the trial would show. Um, preliminary results show that it, it seems unlikely that with standard outcome measures around mental health that there will be um, significant changes. And I think given the results yes. <laughs> of the qualitative, it makes, it makes sense. Yes. Uh, the intervention, when it was delivered well for some people, made a difference. But yes. We're not, we're not convinced that it was either that it was delivered well enough in all situations because of the real difficulties practitioners face, yeah. but also that the services around them were not necessarily able to liaise and support the intervention and in the way that, that in a whole system model yeah. you would want. Okay. And so what next? What would you do now, given you know, the very interesting... Yeah, so from an academic point of view, yeah. what we're doing is really is, is thinking about the theory. Yeah. So what aspects of the theory, of the practice of the intervention do we need to change? Yeah. So we've got some ideas about needing to be much clearer about the kind of psychological state of the individual in terms of, of uh, how to ensure ongoing engagement so that we don't get those people leaving and then, and then uh, feeling that they can't come back. Yeah. Um, but also we want to work with practical service change that's happening. So all around us we've got um, service change happening um, in quite a piecemeal way. But there's, there's, you know, there's probably increasing emphasis on integration and everything that we've proposed is in line with policy changes being put forward. So our model, even, even uh, though we need to tweak it, is in line with current policy change. So we want to work with people who are putting things into practice locally um, and support them to do that in, in a way that's based on the evidence that we've found. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for that, Richard. I'm glad to hear that you're not giving up. Absolutely <laughs> not, no. We think we've got some really great things that have come out of it yeah. and we'll be working forward, definitely. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Thank you.